Hello, it's Bob at Vintage Lambo Super Bowl Sunday. This is a little pre-show video. All right, let's go ahead and talk about 350, 400, Aslero non-air-conditioned cars. Now, air conditioning is on every car today, so why not put it on this one? And that's why I want to try and talk to you about, actually talk you out of trying to put air conditioning on these cars. I know there's one in Europe running around. I don't know exactly how they did it. I'm hoping they didn't uh, short change uh, to make it. So that said, let's talk about what are the differences. Let's talk about shaft and bearings and all that. So here we have, this happens to be the Dream Machine 350. And let's, uh, let's look at this. Uh, we have <clears throat> three, there's three bearings and a bushing. Here we have two bearings. This is the bearing the shaft rides on. It comes through here through a bushing and the other bearing, needle bearing goes through here. So three needle bearings and a bushing. Now, uh, when this uh, comes through, <clears throat> it's actually carrying the oil pump and also uh, the pulley runs on this. And here's the coupler. This coupler goes on here, so we have the power from the crank coming right into here. We have a coupler, and uh, an easy way uh, to check if indeed you have a problem with the coupler wearing out, because they all wear out, is that you can turn the pulley, and you can see how much slop does this have. And I would say that this one uh, is probably halfway there. Uh, we're just going to change it out with a new one. Why not? We're here. Let's do it. Let's make everything right. So there you go. <clears throat> and you can see some wear marks on that side and some inner wear marks right there. The, you can see the, the, the groove right there. Okay. So that is the coupler. But I really want to concentrate on the bearings because look at the difference side by side air conditioned pulley and your normal low amp alternator on the car. I mean, they're probably 35 or 40, something like that. Not much. This is with the air conditioner and it could be a piston type. And that puts a lot of uh, shaking into this that has to be absorbed through the bearings. So that's why it goes to a gear drive. Let's uh, look at the actual difference in the bearing. So, so this is a non-air conditioned bearing, and here's an air conditioned bearing. So you can see you got a double ball bearing, and you had this little needle bearing. So <clears throat> this is extended out a bit. Uh, this, of course, it's a completely different casting, and this bearing sits up here. So the shaft comes through here, has a lot of support for that pulley. So that's why I'm discouraging everyone, don't put on air conditioning thinking like uh, vintage air or something like that. Oh, they have some great units, but it's just not designed for it. Okay, let's uh, talk quickly. Uh, how do you change out these needle bearings? So the needle bearing, you can see it has a case around it and then you have the, the needles and then you have a cage that holds the needles in place. So to take this out, there's absolutely no room to get behind the bearing to try and pull it out. And uh, you can't just grip on this bearing somehow and pull it out. And you certainly don't want to try and pry anything like, you know, it's just not going to work. You have to start destroying the bearing first before you can take out the casing. And so what I'm <clears throat> stating is that you have to take and destroy you see the cage here and take out the, the, the needles. Now you can see the size of the bearings on this uh, non-air conditioned compared to this with balls. It's just uh, night and day. Okay, so now you have that out. So how do you go ahead and uh, take out the casing? And it's with a uh, type of puller. This puller goes in and then it presses and then it expands out so you can get in expand it and then you can slide hammer it out in this case. So let's just show you what it looks like with the, so here it is. We have, this is the outer 
case, you see there's a lip on both sides. And so you can get in, expand it, and then pull it out. It's not easy. They have a pretty good press fit with these. So don't expect a couple wax and it's going to come out. You have to put a little more effort than that. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and let's just talk about how the uh, uh, oil pump, how the oil flows. Uh, real quick, real quick. Okay, so uh, we get the oil from the pickup from the pan, comes in through here, and then we have the oil right here. And these gears are moving to push the oil up into the uh, filter area. So again, on this side, you can see we have a, a channel. Goes up in here. It goes around the outer part of the filter. And you, you have this baby, the case on it. Outer part, and then it is pushed through these holes and then through here. And then this is the outlet that goes to the uh, block so that you can put the oil into the bearings and chains. So that's basically it. Now, the oil filter is strictly that, an oil filter. So if it gets clogged, it's clogged. So what you have is you have a spring-loaded bypass ball right here. So if indeed this it clogs up, this will open up. Then it'll let the unfiltered oil through here and uh, save your engine. Now, <clears throat> when the car is cold, let's say, and um, uh, oil's thick, the pressure really builds up. These cars run at uh, you know 100 psi. <clears throat> so what we have, <clears throat> when the oil is going up, there's a small hole inside here. And <clears throat> this piston blocks the oil from going in, but it's spring-loaded. So what happens is, is that if it's cold, you're running a lot of pressure, you don't want to run that much pressure, then with this piston with a spring on it, will be forced out this way, and you see this hole right here. This, this hole is going to allow to bypass the oil back into the pan. So that's basically the uh, oil pump on the 350, and I'll let you go. Enjoy the game. Bye now.